imagine if you were uh, like my job is a really good example because they told me right off the bat when they first hired you know when, the, when this giant co corporation bought out my little the little team that I was on it was big but small in comparison and they said um, you need to get your next license soon and you'll get a pay raise and then after that they said and they said even further we're gonna have to have you eventually get your you know the top license because that's how big we're gonna be getting and if you don't grow at the company eventually you won't have a job made it very clear that there is a growing with that had to have happened as well you know and it's the same as walking with Jesus okay a continuous thing from the top to the bottom from the first day you came into the faith to the very last day you check out and go to heaven or Jesus comes back and takes all his church away okay either which way we end this thing I don't care what your belief is about how the end goes down or whatever when when the Christians do check out of this earth and do go to heaven okay there needs to be an ongoing connection with the Lord and he's gonna continue to grow you meaning he's gonna walk away and you're gonna hunt him down and he's gonna say that has to change if you want to continue walking and then he's gonna pull away again and you're gonna follow him again and he's gonna say this is where I'm at that you can't take with you if you want to continue following me oh but I did before yeah but you're gonna continue on and things are gonna constantly change there's constant cutting of us, constant conforming us to the image of Christ. He shows us more things that are not fair in our hearts continuously till the day of till the day of, he's going to perfect us. Okay, we all like to sound of we're getting better to be more like Jesus, but like Paul Washer says, that's a death wish. To say make me like Jesus, that's a death wish because you're going to get you're going to get hurt really bad in order to 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 bring your who you are, the core of who you are down to a humble selfless level like Jesus is incredible incredible but there that is one of the signs of true Christianity. You know, there's a lot of people who have a testimony and then they lose it. They start getting careless or they start having a lack of knowledge in certain places of what how, what it really takes to hold on. Listen to all this watered down gospel and try to get people to be comfortable with the religion of the mind. And, and try to coax them into their mind and try to reassure them of something they have no sense of reality about. When they used to have reality about it, they knew they walked away from the Lord. They knew God was requiring them to go a certain place. They knew God was requiring something of them and they knew they weren't willing to give it up. They weren't willing to, to go with the Lord on the note that He was calling them on. And then you try to reassure them that everything's great. It's almost like uh, people who are down trying to bring other people down with them. It's like uh, you go to the... Uh, was that abortion place called the parent pl Planned Parenthood and I remember somebody telling me they went there to get something and they were trying to get her to have an abortion and she wasn't even pregnant I mean those people are trying to bring you down talk about repulsive high pressure to get an abortion and you're not even pregnant talk about nutty okay it's like they're so programmed to bring people down to their psycho level you know, maybe they already did one, and they and they they feel uh oh, they feel bad, and they feel like they're the only way they can justify what they're doing is watching everybody. Oh, everybody's doing it, and so they drag hundreds more poor girls down. Are you pregnant? You don't have to have a baby. I mean, it's so much easier. You got your whole life to think about. Blah blah blah. And they know in their heart that they've jacked up their life forever. You know, I knew somebody who had an abortion, or they had an abortion, and they were about ready to have another one. And um, I was just like, you know, she's like, well, you don't understand. It's going to mess up two years of my life. It's like, first I have to carry the baby, then another year and something for my body to repair again, to go back to normal. And I'm like, okay, and that's worth murdering a baby? You know what I'm saying? It's like, 
Is there really a trade for this? It's ridiculous. And people are trying to bring people down to their level, you know, and people are trying to bring people down to the religious fake level. And I'm telling you, we know in our heart what is true. And uh, we need to be listening to those who are going to be telling us the truth that causes us to know Jesus constantly, continuously knowing Jesus and walking with Jesus. And anybody who preaches a different gospel, I believe it is wrong. The fear of God you read about when people weren't being careful, and they make really, really big choices, and sometimes it can cost them their eternity. And uh, that kind of talk keeps us in line. It keeps us from acting stupid. It, the fear of God cures us from all of our ridiculous um, thought processes. You know, it helps us put our thoughts into obedience of Christ very easily. I, I, I said the fear of God cures every problem. Oh, you got a drug problem? Shh, fear of God will take care of that, no problem. Oh, we have a marriage problem. No, you don't anymore. You, you fear the Lord. <laughs> There's no, there's no problem when you fear the Lord. Everything's in perspective now. You're like, I fear God. I know exactly what to do. I'm not going to have to um, joke around or act like I don't know what's going on. We know and we do better when we know that we're going to be answering to God for our falseness. Because the Bible says we're going to be giving an account for every idle word. Um, how much more of the deeds, which is even bigger, you know. So, amen. Our religion of the mind, part two. Amen.